Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mathieu Dupont de Dinchin. I'm uh, an architect from France, uh, and I teach blend Blender for, I think, more than 10 years now. I teach it in a, in a school of architecture of Grenoble and in the University of Lyon. And uh, I founded a Fab Lab on Makerspace in a this, this Fab Lab in my small village. Uh, so I'm in 3D printing too. But today I will talk mainly about uh, architecture. And I, I wrote a book about Blender for architecture in French. So if you want to start to speak French, I think it's a good opportunity. Uh, so I, uh, I use Blender a lot uh, as an architect. Uh, even if it's not, often it's not the standard uh, user case for architects. But today I will show you some of my works. So I will start with a, a standard case, a small house, and how I use it, and how an average arch architect that didn't spend years in Blender could use it. And then I will show some more complex cases uh, that are, I think, more interesting. Uh, on the one case that is a building uh, that just finished a few months ago. Uh, an example of use of Blender for archaeological rec uh, reconstruction. And if I have time, some experimentation uh, around 3D printing. Mm -hmm. So for the, the daily use uh, of the architect, so I'm, uh, I'm working alone, I'm not in a big... Uh, uh, agency, so I do small projects, small buildings, so mainly houses uh, for people. So uh, generally, most of the work for those type of projects are made in uh, architectural software that are <laughs> generally proprietary software, like Archicad, uh, Revit, All Plan, and this type of things. But I always manage to put a little bit of Blender in it. So this project I will show you, it was a, a small house. Uh, not that small, but uh, uh, a wooden frame house with uh, ecological material. So uh, it's wood for the structure on the um, what cellulose? Uh, cellulose. Uh, I forgot cellulose. What? It's you understand it for the insulation. Uh, so I was in charge of the design of the house, but I didn't uh, follow the. I didn't made the, the site supervision. So it was in a in a village in a something like a, a suburb with small houses everywhere. So the, the first uh, step where I use Blender is for the, the mass sketches. So the, the, um, the terrain was not very big. So to check with the client where we can put the house, uh, the project was, uh, they wanted the house, which is two-story building, uh, a small uh, atelier, a small workshop, and a, car, uh, a place to, to park the car, which is the grey part at the front. And they were very... Uh, uh, the laws didn't allow them to build everywhere on the terrain. So uh, I had to check with them which one of the, the solutions they can use. And this can be done very easily in Blender because you can move the things very fast. Uh, it's almost real time, and even if you with cycle, you can study the the solar uh, projection, the shadows in real time with them. Uh, with the there is an add-on which is called the sun position add-on that is very effective for that. But I think it's not working anymore in the 2.79. I don't know why. So sometime I switch back to the old versions, so I can use it and show them. Okay, at this time of the day, the shadows will be here. The shadows of the neighbor will be on your courtyard and things like that. So uh, most of the architects I know, they prefer to use things like uh, SketchUp to do these type of things. But uh, I find uh, Blender more effective and fast to use. So I prefer to use Blender. Uh, then in the second part, I switched to, at this time I was using uh, Archicad, uh, which is an architectural software that doesn't run on Linux, uh, uh, unfortunately. So uh, you use it to, okay, to draw the plans, to check the quantities, have the, the quantity of floor, of roofing, of everything, and make uh, 
quotations, I think we call it like that, uh, things that you cannot do in Blender. And then I switch back uh, in Blender for the renderings. Um, generally, from Archicad, uh, I use a 3DS uh, export format because this is the one that works the best. And none is perfect between uh, 3DS, uh, OBG, um, Colada. Uh, none of them is perfect. Uh, the advantage with the, the 3DS export is that it keeps the UV mapping that is done by the architectural software. So you, you import it in Blender and you don't have to UV map your things. So all the names are completely messy. Uh, there is one material per object. So you have uh, 54 walls and uh, each of them has a new material which is called wall 001, wall 002. So there is small work to do, but uh, it's easy to do in Blender. You select everything, uh, Control L, uh, link uh, material, so that you have only one left. So it's not that big work to do, but there are a few things that will prevent an architect uh, that doesn't know Blender to switch easily to this type of things, because if you show him, okay, you just have to do uh, Control L, and uh, you just have to change that and change that and change that, it seems small amount of work for us that are used to Blender, but for somebody that doesn't use it every day, it, it may uh, discourage him. So at this, type of, at this time of the project, uh, I don't want, uh, I will show you, uh, so I can use uh, renderings for two things. Uh, one is for the uh, permit, uh, the building permit, uh, because you need a, a view of the project to uh, to view how it is integrated in the surroundings and things like that. And I use it to, uh, to discuss of options for materials with the clients. So here, this was the original project, but the, the city council uh, refused the black tiles because in France, they copy paste the laws for architectural things from one village to the other one. And everywhere it's written red tiles, everywhere. And uh, so the, the, the church that is just aside has a black tiles, but <laughs> church is a church. So. so they refused it, so I had to discuss with the clients to see what option we, we keep uh, if, if we fight with the city council or if they accept the red tile. But at this time, I wrote it, uh, realism is not an option because uh, you are doing just a project and if you, are, if you are using cycles to have the most uh, realistic rendering, then the client will come back to you uh, six months later to tell you, okay, it was supposed to be like that, and this is what I got. And uh, so it's for that that it's, uh, it's a choice to make uh, unrealistic projects. Uh, the aim of, of, the, of the rendering is to, to make the client understand how the house will be. But you must always keep distance, uh, put distance between the, the project and the reality so that he, they will not assume that it is supposed to be exactly like that. It's for that the trees are very ugly, uh, that I add with, uh, I use a lot of um, freestyle to add lines so that the people, they see that, they, they know it's a drawing, it's not a, a picture. So, if we have time, at the end, I will show you the... the okay, I can just show you the, the file. Uh, it's not very complicated. It's supposed to be here. And uh, not to forget that uh, I am paid to design the house, not to make beautiful images. So uh, the price I'm paid to design the first sketch of the houses is not the price... Uh, a designer would be paid to make a beautiful image. So I don't, my work is not to make perfect images. And most of the time, my clients are not in the graphic design uh, uh, world, so they don't care very much. They find this very nice, even if I'm not very proud of the trees and the things like that. Okay, it's not my best image. But the clients, they, they are okay with this. So uh, this is the import uh, almost directly from, uh, from Archicad. Uh, and maybe if I open the outliner, you will see uh, the messy names and things like that. So these are the names of my objects. So it's very easy to, <laughs> to, uh, 
to move around. So if you don't have, uh, if you don't have to go back and front from the architectural software to Blender and then go back and then go back, it's very okay because you know, you know what you design in the architectural software and once you are done in this one, you export to Blender and then you don't move uh, things anymore because if you start to make the two ways uh, exchanges, it will not work and you will lose a lot of things. But then you just have, uh, as I told you, the, the UV mapping is, is perfectly, not perfectly, but is, no, it's not this one, sorry. Um, if I enter edit mode, okay, you see the UV mapping is done, is done in a very strange way. Okay, the thing is splattered, but if you have, if it's for a texture of wood like this one, it will make the trick because you don't care if it's the things are very well aligned uh, where they are. So as I use uh, very much repetitive uh, tileable uh, textures, this type of UV mapping is, is more than enough. And then at the end, the clients uh, got their houses. It's not finished yet. For once, they were happy with their project. It's not always the case. So uh, now we'll talk about another project that was uh, much more interesting for me. Uh, it started as a teaching project. In fact, I was uh, teaching in a, no, no Blender. I was teaching an architectural project in an engineering school uh, from Saint Etienne. And uh, we made some projects, we showed it to the council of the city, and I said, oh, it's nice what you did. Uh, maybe the next one you could work on a site. We have a project for some years later. So I made the students work on a, on a project on this site. And uh, two years later, the city council decided to build this project and uh, to build it uh, respectful to what the students did with me, so it's a, uh, but it started as a student project and it finished as a, as a build project, so I was very happy that uh, we can uh, go uh, from the beginning to the end. It's in an uh, arboretum, so I think this word uh, exists in English, so it's a place where you, you have a lot of trees. Uh, it's on the small mountain at the top of the city of Juan, uh, close to where I live, and you have a very uh, beautiful view. And, uh, but there is no, when you arrive there, you just park your car and there are trees everywhere and you don't know where to go. So the, the, the city council wanted a, a small building that catch the eyes and when the people park their car, they know where to go because they, they see the, the building. Um, it was supposed to be, uh, I didn't find the, the, the word in French is préau and the translation in English is a, uh, is a covered uh, courtyard, like for children, you know, in schools. Uh, they call it Hall, uh, city, uh, uh, big things, but it, it, in fact, it's quite small. It's an open structure, it's not closed. Uh, it was supposed to allow people coming to take a walk, uh, to allow them to enjoy the panoramic view, uh, sheltered from the, the wind and the, and the, the rain. Uh, it's supposed to receive some exhibitions once in a while. And uh, there are a lot of schools visiting the place to discover the trees. So it was uh, made to be uh, big enough to receive one complete class and have the space for the teacher to explain the things and things like that. Uh, there were some constraints. Uh, so in the arboretum, they have uh, trees. So uh, one of the constraints was to use the trees of the site. So it was very interesting for me because I, I'm in uh, ecological buildings and uh, I think it's the, I, I will never make a, a more perfect project for that because the wood was taken on the site and did only uh, 15 kilometers by truck to go to the sewing, uh, the guy that saw the wood and then it came back to the to the site, so is, uh, the, the wood made 30 kilometers uh, only for this project. So I was very happy with that. But it was a constraint because they wanted to use local wood, so no laminated uh, timbers. I don't know if you understand what it means. So uh, we had to find the, 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 the trees are not very big, so we had to use small uh, parts. We could not use a big uh, 
big timbers and big things like that. And it was supposed to be a showroom for some wooden techniques, so they wanted that the people visiting the building can see, okay, this, this is how we build, how we can build today with wood, uh, with local wood. And they wanted something quite contemporary, even if it doesn't, doesn't mean anything, but okay, uh, so, uh, and even among them, they didn't uh, know what what to choose. Some of them wanted round timber to be like a forest, some wanted uh, incredible things, but the, the budget was not that big. It was uh, 70,000 euros to build uh, the complete things, but as it's open, there is no insulation, there is no electricity, no water, uh, so it was a... Uh, it was enough, but there were no, no room for incredible uh, extravaganza and things like that. So this is the site. In fact, we had a very small terrain uh, around it. was not the same proprietary, so we were uh, to be on the small terrain. And uh, there is a, a big slope, and uh, you have to make the access for the the people in wheelchair because it's compulsory in France. So it was quite difficult to place the, the building on the slope so that there is not too much slope for the, the, the wheelchairs. Um, one of the interesting things is that, okay, as there are not so many architects here, I will pass this fast, but uh, in France for public uh, buildings, uh, you choose the architect first, he makes the design, and then, with this design, you choose the companies that will build. And in some of the cases, and in that case it was that, the companies are responsible for the structural uh, uh, calculation. And so, it's the company that is supposed to uh, calculate the size of the woods. But we had to cut the, the trees long before the time we can choose the companies, because uh, the, the wood has to dry, and we didn't want to dry it in an oven, because uh, we would have lost completely the, the ecological aspect of the project. So uh, I had to design the building, uh, even if I was not responsible of the, of the calculation, I had to design it as close as possible to, to, uh, to what it would be in reality. Uh, and uh, I, as the, all the carpentry work wooden frame would be visible, uh, I had to spend a lot of time on the, all the uh, fixing and everything to be sure that, uh, okay, the more precise I am, the more chance the, the, there is that the carpenter will respect what I draw and that the project will be as I designed it. In the first house, for example, I don't care what is inside, all the, the carpentry, the wooden frame is inside the walls, so it's not important here, everything is outside. So I needed a, a design tool that is fast, precise, effective during the sketching phase. Uh, and I wanted to have the liberty to, to play with the, the shapes while designing it. So I'll let you guess which one I choose. So this was the, the first sketch of the building. So you see it's, it's very complicated. Uh, I think 90% is cubes, so it's the basic cube, and you just have to scale it. And uh, I will show you the uh, the file. So this was the first design to show to the what we call esquisse in French, so sketch in English. Uh, I think it's sketch. So it was to have the no, the, this one is not the one. This one was what we finished with with the students. Uh, with the students, we finished with a project like that, but the, the size of those woods uh, would have needed to use uh, laminated uh, timber, so it was uh, impossible to build it like that. But the general uh, concept with the, the two, uh, two parts uh, um, roof uh, was kept. And uh, my first sketch was... Uh, was it uh, maybe in this one? Oh, th this is uh, not the sketch, so I will find it. Um, sorry, okay, it should be this one. No, 
you should clean your, your files at the end of your project because later it's too late. <laughs> and after you, you don't remember what you did. So here, the only thing that was not designed in Blender is the, the terrain because in, uh, for this project I use uh, Revit from a company, I won't say the name because the last time uh, Ton said the name of the company, he received a part of the roof on the, on the head. So Revit is an architectural software uh, which has a tool that is very efficient to design the terrain uh, f uh, with, uh, with the 2D plans from the, uh, you get with the altitude of uh, every point. But except that, uh, I designed everything in, in Blender very fast. So what I wanted is to have the ability to, to just rotate the parts uh, the, the way I want, uh, to check what inclination of the of the parts of the timbers I can use. Uh, because as you have the slope here, I didn't want to have a, a pillar at this part to make the, the building more uh, separated from the terrain. So I used this and this uh, X shape so that uh, this part in fact is, uh, is supported by this pillar. And, uh, and the, the X shape and the V shape here allows to have a very small uh, Porté in French, a very small distance here that allow us to use the local woods with, uh, with small parts. But then I, I had to play with the angles and it was quite easy in Blender. The, the only thing uh, to take care of is to respect the local axis. So everything, uh, I kept in mind that every cube, uh, the length of the wood is the Z local axis, so that if I want to change the size of this part, I just select the point that is here, or the face here, and I do G, Z, Z, and uh, I can move the part. So if you, if you just respect this small rule, you are sure to, to have everything aligned uh, correctly. So it's quick and dirty. You see that here uh, I didn't took time to, to adjust the size and everything, but it was the sketch f phase, so uh, you don't need to go very uh, far in the designing uh, process because uh, a lot of things can still change uh, at this time of the, of the project. So if you spend uh, two hours designing all the small parts and the client say, okay, now finally I don't want this, you, you just lost, uh, lost two hours. So we'll see a lot of small things change uh, and I use a lot of snap, of course, and a lot of array, a lot. I think most of the project here is made of arrays. This is an array, this is an array, this is an array. The, uh, this part is an array too, with a curve modifier. Curve, uh, curve is very, oh, sorry, is very efficient. I should have not touched this. Huh? Uh, to build uh, this things like that uh, with one curve you can rule it rule everything so you have one curve that is making the the shape of the how do you call that barrier balustrade railing. Hmm? Railing. railing okay thank you and uh, with the same curve you can use it uh, with a curve modifier to uh, and uh, an array for the vertical parts you, you make an array fit on curve so that the, the, the several uh, array parts fit on the curve, then curve modifier, and your array follows uh, things. And then with the same curve, you just use the section of the wooden uh, part and the metal part. And with one curve, you move the curve and everything moves. No, that's quite effective, except in the angles uh, here. You cannot easily... Uh, say, okay, I want one uh, pillar in this angle. But at this stage of the project, it's no, no problem. Nobody told me, ah, it's missing a part here. So, um, so the rendering is fast because you don't have time to lose again. And for that, I must say that uh, uh, cycles really changed my life because uh, you just in, uh, I think in two minutes, 
uh, settings, you have a nice renderings. So in my uh, starting a startup file, I have one sun and one uh, sky. That's all. And it's enough to have this type of renderings. And your clients say, oh, it's beautiful. And uh, he doesn't know that you didn't spend uh, time at all with that. And if you have a graphic card, it's very fast. So for that, he, at this stage, you see the, the grass is very ugly. Uh, the clients, they, I don't need to put uh, lines with freestyle or, because they know that it's not the, the finished project because everything is ugly around. So. So it allows us to discuss the general shape to convince the client and the quality of the render is not the point. The only thing is that I wanted them to see what part is wood, what part is concrete. So the, there is some concrete for the foundation and that's all. And then we go to the detailed project. So what we call the avant projet détaillé in French. So the, the, the detailed project that will allow you to, to have the construction permit and uh, that will be the base to, for the discussion with the, with the companies that will build. So this is uh, a rendering with, uh, with cycles again on a picture of the site so that for the building permit you are obliged to do that in France. Uh, and I added freestyle lines. I don't know if you see it. It's not. It's very tiny. So that again, we put some distance with the with the picture, so that people don't think it's a picture. We will see at the end if it was needed or not. But and I just I lose some time here to have the shadow projected here. I think nobody noticed it, but <laughs> uh, it was more for me than for the client. So to, to make this precision modeling, so you see here that all the assembly is designed here with the cut at the right angles and things like that. Um, so you have to use a lot of workarounds. So I will open the file. Um, it's for that I say somebody that would uh, just start Blender will not use Blender for that. But in uh, Revit that I use for the plans, uh, building things like that is very cumbersome. It's more precise, but you cannot change the angles, for example, of the, the shape. And here, for example, uh, you can, but not easily. You have to rebuild everything. And here, for example, in this part, there is a law in France that say that if, uh, if a part is under 2,20 meters, you have to make uh, a sign on the wall, on the on the floor, so that people won't bump their head. So here, with the first design, I was the I had the inclinated part uh, that was too low, so the the people would have, I, I it would have been needed to make a, a smaller uh, smaller uh, step here, so that people will not bump their head. So what I, I had to change the angle here, so that if, if you look at the side here, when you stand at this point, uh, here you are at 2 meter 20. So uh, from the sketch I made, I showed you before, I had to change everything. In the sketch, it was uh, much lower. I, if I can go back to the sketch. The first one uh, is this one, I think. Here is much lower uh, on the, in this part here. Here you can bump your head. So, uh, as I'm used to, to Blender, and uh, I even started to, to design this type of thing with no snap before the snap arrived uh, in Blender, before these buttons <laughs> arrived in Blender, with only a uh, Shift S snap to cursor, Shift S. Uh, cursor to selection, selection to cursor uh, during arrows. Uh, so I'm not very afraid of this type of things. The main, uh, the main thing is to always think about your axis. Remember what is the axis of the, 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 the parts. So every, if I use those, this very ugly thing that I never use, the, the small gizmo here, uh, the, you can see, okay, I will, sorry, I will put it on the, so this can show you the axis of the object. So every of them, 
as the z axis in the correct uh, direction. And once you have that, it's just a matter of using g, z, z, and you move along the axis. Uh, to make those cuts, uh, in fact, I didn't do it. You see, if I zoom very close, it's it's not a good work. I started doing it the first time. But the easiest way I found, uh, I tried with booleans uh, to make booleans for everything, but it's too slow. And uh, you lose too much time. And uh, once you have uh, 10 or 12 booleans, uh, editing becomes just, uh, okay, you click edit mode, and then you go, you drink your coffee, coffee you come back. Uh, what works very well to have a cut that is aligned with the other part is to use the, the knife tool because the knife tool can be uh, can uh, um, be snapped to other uh, vertices, so you just you put it in the front view. Sometimes you have to include uh, uh, to join some of the parts so that you can, if you use uh, the cut tool, uh, okay. and then you snap from here to here, and then you have your cut that is perfectly aligned, but is not uh, interactive. So if you change the angle, you have to cut again. It's not that difficult. You just Again, up, you select everything, G, Z, Z, up, you move, and you cut again. So, But it's it's for that, I, I won't say it's the perfect tool. I always say to my students, some people, they build a cathedral with a, with a match, matches. It doesn't mean that matches are the best tool to build cathedral. So I use Blender for this. It doesn't mean Blender is the best tool for that. For example, in free tools, uh, one of the tools that could be more effective is FreeCAD, uh, that is more parametric than Blender, but I don't know it so much as Blender, so uh, I prefer to use Blender. But I, I don't advise to my students to make the projects this way, because it's, uh, it's a lot of time if you don't know Blender. If you know Blender, it's with the keyboard shortcut, it's so easy to do G, Z, Z, uh, Shift K, cut, uh, align, uh, S, Z, zero, because if you want to align uh, just a very basic trick, uh, if I want to make all of this uh, perpendicular again, I just do S, Z, Z, zero, and then it's perpendicular again. And uh, once you know those little tricks that are nothing very special, uh, and you get used to it, you can really build very fast your, your things. Um, So something that is missing, but not for long, is layout. Uh, is a layer manager. It's not layout, sorry. Uh, the layer manager. So for that, there is an add-on that I really, if you don't know it, and you have complex projects, you have to use it. Because in the layer manager, so it's not the correct file, because here my layers have no name. Uh, with the layer manager, I will try to find a new name. Uh, the, okay, I think it's this one. No. Oh, okay, this one. So during the old days, I always had a text editor in which I was typing uh, the, the name of my layers. Uh, saying okay, like that. You see, I don't know. I don't know. Can you read the texts that are? Yeah. So I was writing layer one is the terrain. Layer layer two is the foundation and uh, things like that. Uh, with this add-on, the the layer manager, you have, you can name all your layers and you can do group of layers. So when you have a because two weeks after you have closed for the last time your project, you don't remember where is what. It's impossible. You only have those dots here. And uh, um, so with this one, for example, I have the, this one means what I will need for the rendering, okay? And this one means everything of the building and you don't have to activate it by hand. And then the, just the one trick I used for this project that I will show you uh, is the, here I have a lot of objects that are uh, 
linked duplicates one from the other one. And uh, when you use a wood texture, so to, to make it clear, uh, more clear, what I will do is, uh, okay, I will just show this one here. So let's assume you have a lot of duplicates. So it's linked duplicates of the same object here. And you have your floor that is made of a lot of uh, piece of wood like that. If you use UV mapping on the standard material for this, then if there is one uh, uh, knock uh, no, uh, node in the wood, or do you, it will be repeated everywhere and it's very ugly. So there is just one little trick that uh, maybe some, probably some people will know. Um, if I go in the material settings, okay. Uh, where is my wood? Is that I use UV mapping because with the UV mapping you can uh, choose the orientation of your wood. But then what I do is that I just will move the the texture, the UV mapping, depending of the random uh, from object info node. The problem is that the vector you cannot, uh, you are obliged to separate x, y, z from the vector. But then with an add node, I checked just one is enough. If you if you just remove this one, it, it works. So for every object, even if they are linked duplicate, they have the same material, if you make linked duplicate uh, 20 times, with this random here, you will add to the x value of the UV and to the y value of the UV a random uh, offset so that every object will have a, a different. So if I do a very fast rendering here, we can see that they are not, it's the same texture, it's the same material, and it's the same object, but with this very small trick. And uh, uh, I use this a lot because uh, basically a wooden frame house is a uh, hundred times the same object. You have the, <laughs> you have the pillar and you just make a, a copy of, of it. So just small trick. So this is the, the views of the I did for the the carpenter to be sure he understands what I was uh, wanting, and then from this he made what we call execution plans, the plan d'exécution, uh, that are more buildable than this one. And uh, and he is responsible if if it falls down, he is the guy that will go to jail. No, no, I will just have to pay a lot of money. Uh, so, just this one is just is more. It's not so serious, but uh, for some years now, uh, still you can surf on the hype about virtual reality, and it's very useful to convince clients. So, uh, on basic basic virtual reality is very very easy to do, thanks to the Vray guys. The Vray guys. I don't know if you know this. Uh, in five minutes you get your uh, project in virtual, uh, you download it on your phone, then you use uh, uh, cardboards or things like that, and you show this to the client, and the client say, wow. So, but uh, what I noticed is that the people, they are more impressed by your phone than on the, <laughs> the, the, the way they move the head than by the project. They don't look at the project anymore, so it's, you have to be careful with that. Uh, I made the test once the building was finished, the day of the uh, inauguration of the building. I, I brought my phone on my glass, and, uh, and the people were trying it. So some people were not looking at the building anymore. They just wanted to test the thing. And, uh, and it's very difficult to find, I don't know what setting to change, but with the narrow angle of the, of the phones in the in the Googles, uh, in the, how do you call this? Cardboard, Cardboard thank you. Uh, it makes uh, a strange offset of size. On you are in the building, you put it, you recognize it's the same building, but you don't feel it's the same size. And uh, so the, it's not that easy yet. There, there are 
time after time making the those devices larger, not on the phone, but the ones that you connect to your computer. So it, I, I think it will solve the problem. But today I find it a little bit dangerous in the project phase to show to a client, especially in a inside room, to show him on your phone the VR, because uh, he will have a, a feeling of space that is different of what the project will be at the end. And uh, it may make some mistakes. So the hype may not last long. So I think in two years time, this one will not be enough to impress people. But for the moment, uh, the, uh, when you showed your project with something like that, it just make them say, oh, and, uh, and they take you seriously. And so you can use this uh, to convince the people. But remember that it's, it can be uh, dangerous. So this is the the address of the, 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 I don't know where it is. It was open somewhere. Or maybe I closed it. But uh, you can do download it on your phone or on, or on your browser, and you can move uh, in it. Or at the end, if you want, I have my, uh, my plastic cardboard, and you can test it. It's funny. Um, I just check the time. OK. Uh, so the exchange with the other actors, I will go quite fast. And if some people have technical questions about this, I will talk with them later. Uh, so in this project, I made the things uh, in the wrong way. So generally, you, you design the building in the architectural software, and then you export it in Blender to make the render. Here, I designed the building in Blender, but then I had to make uh, the plans, printed plans with quotation. So I, have to, I had to export from Blender to Revit. Uh, it works quite well once you have found the workaround and you take care to put always your object with the origin at the correct place. And then you have, for the ones who know Revit, you have to import it in a family so that you can make cuts. And it's, it's quite okay. Well, the plans I made for the, the building permit, in fact, it's the, it's the Blender import from, uh, from Blender to Revit. And I could use uh, snapping to make all the quotations and things like that. Uh, so with uh, building information modeling on the IFC, I don't know if some people know what it means, this type of things. So it's supposed to be the future and uh, save everybody and uh, everybody will be happy in the building uh, industry. Uh, it's far from perfect. So one, one of the main problem is that uh, IFC is not parametric for the moment. So uh, even, for example, you do in FreeCAD, you do a parametric uh, building where you, you type, OK, length of the beam, and it changes. You export that with IFC to Revit, and you lose the parametric. You have the exact copy of your project, but it's not parametric anymore. Um, the axes are well kept. Uh, names are exported, uh, so with Blender, I can show you this one, because I have it here. Um, I think it's on this, okay. This is the IFC import from uh, the Carpenter. So from my design, it, cha it changed the, the design to make it easier to build for him. And uh, if you, what is interesting is that in the, in the object settings, here, you find uh, the IFC type. So this is a beam. The name, the, this is the ID uh, from the, the IFC. Um, and you have everywhere, every object has a correct, uh, as correct axes. So if I use this one. So you see that this beam has its axis this way, and this beam has its axis this way. So the import is quite usable, except that, of course, I designed everything with the z-axis in this lens. And when you import from IFC, the z-axis is perpendicular. So it disturbed me a lot uh, after. But uh, so the, there is a IFC importer, which is an add-on from Blender. Uh, it's 
made by uh, IFC OpenShell. So you can, if you Google, uh, uh, if you search in another uh, searching engine than Google uh, IFC Blender, you will find easily this importer, but there is no exporter for the moment. The only way to export from Blender to IFC uh, with free software is to export it uh, to FreeCAD, and FreeCAD has an IFC exporter that is working quite well, but it's not for the, uh, the, the daily work. Um, one of the problems compared to 3DS, uh, OBG, Collada, and things like that is that IFC doesn't contain any material information, uh, material in the sense of Blender. Uh, so you have no UV, you have to UV map uh, everything. So the next step was, and I will go faster, uh, was to make a model of the building. In fact, I made the model after the building was built because I had no time before. But let's say I should have done it this way. Um, so this was quite an easy part, a uh, funny part, and finally uh, easier than what I thought. Um, so there is an add-on for Blender, which is called uh, SVG uh, Exporter, that is quite effective because uh, the, the laser cutter, most of them, they use um, SVG or uh, Illustrator type uh, vector um, not uh, pixels. So you have to export all of your shapes into uh, SVG to, to, to cut it. So in the Fab Lab we have a laser saw, which is an open source, open hardware uh, laser cutter, which uses SVG. So you have to export all of your parts into SVG. Uh, so the thing is that you have to convert all of the meshes into curves. In fact, it's, it's quite easy. I'll just show you if, if you want. Uh, you select the face, okay, but this is the carpenter work, I didn't want this, so, but I will just, first thing is to remove all the triangles with Alt-G, so that you have only square faces. You select the face you want, so this, this one, I will remove all, all the other ones. I missed it, uh, sorry. Uh, it's the problem with live. Um, so that I have only this that remains. The problem is that the IFC exporter exports it with the Z axis this way. So if you want a two, 2D curve, you will lose because the 2D, uh, the 2D curve has the Z axis uh, normal to the surface. So if you want a 2D curve so that you can after put some thickness with the extrude so that you can check that your model is correct. If it's not clear, I show you. Um, so because once you have converted everything to SVG to, to curves, you have to check that your model is correct. Okay, no, it's not the, the, the I will show you later. So it could be easy to do a script, I had no time, but you rotate R, X, X, 90 degrees in edit mode, and then in object mode, you rotate R, X, is minus 90 degrees. And then you have the Z axis. Okay, it was the Y, but uh, you understand the... So you have to do it with every part. So this is where scripting is very interesting because you can easily script this. I even almost managed to do it. <laughs> and I am very, very bad at scripting. And then after one hour struggling, uh, I just said, okay, do it by hand. And I finished it by hand. I was quite ashamed because I wanted to show you my first script that is working, but okay. Uh, but as most of the parts of the building are, are the same, in fact, you see all here, all the beams are the same. For the roof, it's the same. So it took me uh, 45 minutes to convert everything to curves. And then you get a file that is like that. Um, where is it? Ah, this one. So where, in fact, I converted to curves all the parts. I modified them a little bit so that I can cut it in the laser cutter. But this is a curve uh, with an extrude value here 
of 2.5 millimeters because I was cutting it in a 5 millimeter plywood and extrude, extrude it the two sides. It's quite, it makes me mad that every time you have to, <laughs> to divide by two the value here, but that's it. Um, and so I, I, I just had to convert everything into curve, check with this uh, extrude that the building was okay. So I modified it a little bit because in the real building you don't have those small gaps because it's, it's metal uh, fixtures that fix it. But this is very easy to do with an array modifier. You just, you draw this and then array and in uh, one minute you have it. And then at the end I got uh, something like that. And we will go fast. So this is the, the all the beams of the parts. And then you just have to spend. It was longer to glue everything than to uh, make the process of converting it from from the EFC import into SVG. So then you glue, and you glue, and you glue again. OK, I finished it in my kitchen. So this this cannot be scripted. Unfortunately, <laughs> and then you have the the model uh, that is almost uh, almost true to the building, except that you don't have all the the thickness in the in the shops for the the, the, the plywood. So I had to adjust uh, some of the sizes, but uh, it's just a matter of scale. So then. Uh, what was quite long is once you have all your... Uh, the problem with the SVG exporter is that it exports one curve at a time. So one day maybe uh, somebody will work on it again. So uh, on this project where most of the curves were, were re repetitive, it's not a problem. But if I had to do this with uh, 200 curves, is is you cannot do it. So you have to modify the SVG exporter so that you can export all the curves in the same time, or you join them. So, so, but for that, if you want to join them, it's better to place it the correct way before. So what is interesting for that is that I didn't find an add-on to make a packing of curves on a sheet, but there is a, a version of Blender that is called Blender Cam that is designed for CNC machining that I, I'm using for in, in the Fab Lab for the CNC. So it's, uh, it's something like that. You just change the rendering engine into Blender Cam and you can set your uh, cutting operation. And they included a part that is called Pack, on, pack Curves on Sheet that does exactly that. You have uh, 200 curves, all uh, one uh, just set like that, mixing. Huh? And then you say the size of the, the sheet, and it just align them uh, so that there is no gap, or a gap you choose. And it can, uh, you can disable rotation, because for me it was important that the, p the pieces I cut in the plywood respect the, the the, yes, the grain of the wood. So uh, you have to to put the rotation in a good way, and then if you disable this, uh, it will place all the sheets, but keeping the rotation so that you can cut it. Uh. So it's as I told you, it's not for the it's not for the guy. You just, you tell him, okay, tomorrow you you will be able to do that because you have to use a lot of workarounds, but it works. And finally, this is the, the, the final building that is finished now. So the only thing that didn't work well was the growing of the, of the, of the grass. So the grass was not ready for the inauguration day. It's for that there is the... But the, the building was finished and uh, I'm quite happy with the... This was the, the image for the building permits before we choose the company. And this was the, the final result. <laughs> so, uh, sorry. So there are some 
there are some uh, very small differences here in the in this part of the walls, but for the rest is uh, no. It's uh, I'm quite happy with with that. Uh, let me just check time. Okay, I have. I forgot to start my my clock, so I didn't see. I only have five minutes. Uh, either I show you uh, some other things, or if you prefer, I can ask for questions. If people have some questions, I can show you a very smaller picture. Just uh, this one. Just in in one minute, um, what I like in this example is that uh, the, the 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 builders in the, so this is from uh, Gaul, uh, okay, at the same time uh, than Roman in France, and they didn't use uh, straight wood at this time. So all the building is just like that, and uh, doing this is very easy in Blender uh, using what is it? Uh, Using lattice, so I have to close this one. Okay, you just with a lattice and a modifier. So you have to put a subsurf modifier, but not a Catmull Clark, a simple modifier, subsurf simple modifier. Then you put a lattice, the same lattice on all your building, and then you just move around things and have fun, uh, and the building moves. And every part of the buildings move with it. And what is interesting is that, okay, your uh, your walls. So you, they are not straight at all. You see, they are bended, and in top view they are not straight. But if you enter edit mode, they become straight again. So you can move your windows using the local axis, and things like that. Uh, you, if you have to move something, you use the local axis, and then you go out from the Edit mode and everything is is bended. Uh, so where is it? So this is what I like with this type of uh, of things. Uh, then 3D printing. Uh, I will show you where is the. But maybe if if there, there 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 is some space for the lightning talk tomorrow. I will show you. Uh, I will show this uh, tomorrow for the lightning talk. So this is things I designed in Blender. I think you know how to design it. There is nothing impressive in the design. You take a curve. Okay, you take a circle. Then you take select uh, one every two points. There is a, in the select menu you have this, and then you make a scale so that one every two points go inside, and you have a flower. Then. You extrude it, and you take the top, you tilt it, and you scale it, and you have your your, your lamp. So this was a lamp I destroyed by mistake. Uh, it was a glass lamp at the origin, and I destroyed it. And uh, I had to redesign it and print it before my wife uh, <laughs> ran away. So, and finally, I prefer this one than the original one. And uh, yes, I, I, I'm quite obsessive with lampshades. So these are uh, examples of the of lampshades I designed in uh, in Blender. Uh, I like this one because it's uh, it shows the the difference between what you design in Blender and what you got in uh, 3D printing. Uh, in Blender, everything is uh, is perfect, and uh, when you 3D print it, there is some. Uh, Imperfections that finally I, I find more beautiful. This is very easy to do. Uh, very easy. It's uh, okay. It's a basic shape. Okay, it's a cylinder. Then you make all the face triangular. You put a small displace modifier with a noise so that it's a little not so uh, straight. Then you make a linked duplicate of this. You put a um, so the, uh, the modif uh, wireframe modifier on this one, so that you have the wireframe of your lamp, and then you make a boolean between the the basic shape with the solidify modifier and the wireframe shape, so that you have a thinner part here. And then when you print it, uh, it lets the light 
So I don't know if I have the time to show you the model, but I should have it somewhere here. Uh, I think it's in this one. No, okay. The, these are some other tests. Uh, Uh, okay, this one. I'm sure it's this one. And then uh, I can show you other things I uh, 3D printed. So this is a, a lamp. I will go the other way so that you understand how it's done. So I'm almost as obsessive with lamp shade uh, as I am with uh, displace modifier on the on procedural textures. So this is just uh, okay. It's a very basic uh, polygonal uh, shape uh, with a lot of subsurf modifier and a displace modifier with a Voronoi texture. And then I used the uh, plaster, uh, it's earth uh, uh, clay to plaster it. And then with a, a sponge, you remove uh, what is the, okay, in the top. And then when you light, uh, so the plaster keeps everywhere except in the, and uh, you you get uh, this this thing. Okay. And I think it's time. Okay, this is the same than uh, than the one I showed, but with just. Uh, okay. The only thing more is that I used a build modifier. Uh, I don't know where it is. No, it's because it's pinned here. So the build modifier allows you to build something, or if you inverse it, I don't know if you know the... Okay, it will just make disappear randomly the faces of your object. So that uh, once I finished the first lampshade, I said, okay, well, I will try with some holes. So with the build modifier that is here with it reversed, and then if you move in time, it's quite slow on my laptop, you can choose the amount, because when you move in time, it will disappear slowly, and you choose the amount of faces you want to disappear, and the amount of faces you want to keep. And the, okay, it disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> so one day, one day we will have modifiers that are uh, multi-threaded, and that will be fast. This one was a complete uh, failure. Because the light is not proportional at all with the thickness of the plastic. In fact, uh, I wanted to have something uh, with the, the light passing more or less. But in fact, you, I just had patches of light uh, and it was not, uh, not nice at all. So this is the, the wireframe shape. And where is the original shape? It will be long to show. It should be here. Sorry, it's only my laptop. So this is the how it looks like it looks like in Blender. So if you just have a look at the, the modifier stacks, you have a solidify modifier to give the thickness. Then you have a simple subsurf modifier, then another subsurf modifier, the Boolean with the, the with the grid version of it. But if you go in edit mode, the basic shape is just is just that. Okay, it's a cylinder, scale the top and uh, change all the face. And what I like with modifiers is that of course you can it's you can change it anytime you want. And as everything is linked, it should work. But generally the last thing you do uh, when you are already late, doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know if we have time for more questions. If there are some questions, it worked. Yeah. Just, Just one question. Thank you. No, it didn't. Yes. Okay, so. How did you exactly export the uh, mesh from Blender to Revit? What was it then in Revit? So, uh, which format? And IFC via no, the, via FreeCAD or no, no, no. Um, it was too cumbersome to go through FreeCAD, so I used uh, 
I even don't remember if it's, I think it's 3DS, dot 3DS format. Um, then uh, in Revit, you know Revit? You use yeah, it? Yeah, I've heard of it. Okay, I, in I Revit you have, you have something that is called a family. A family, in fact, is an object that can be shared between several things. So when you put a family in your, in your, let's say this is a family, I put it in my project. If I change the original uh, family file, it's changed in all of my projects. And the, the other thing is that if you import the 3DS file in your project in Revit, when you cut it with the cut tool, you don't see uh, the hatches and things like that. So you have to import your 3DS export from Blender in a family, and, so that you, and then you place your family in your project, so that when you change in Blender your file, then you import it again in your family, and the Revit will update it uh, automatically. So in, with that uh, workflow, you have almost uh, a back and forth possibility. The only thing is that you have to understand where is the, sound, the, the origin of the family and to locate the origin of your uh, project at the same place. So you move all your project in Blender so that the zero of the project will be where you want the zero in Revit. Once you found this, it's quite uh, straightforward because anytime you move a beam in Blender, you export it again, import it again in the family, and in your plans, everything uh, moves. So it's, it's much better than what I did before with, uh, with Archicad. So it's not perfect yet, but it's, uh, it's quite working. So I use it for, for the, the project. Thanks. You're welcome. Other questions? So thank you all for your questions.